It's the year of our Lord, 2012. We have some very interesting things that are going to transpire this year. In as much as we have um, at the winter solstice, we have the Mayan calendar coming to an end. What exactly does that mean? They ran out of rock. Okay. <laughs> now, what it does mean, let's, I'll be serious too, it means it starts over. Okay. But there are other things connected with this we need to take into consideration. Let's take January, the first month of this great year. When you look up Saturn, which you will notice in Amos chapter uh, 5, verse uh, 26, is Kayan in the Hebrew tongue. That, that's Saturn. It's Satan's planet. It's the star of Moloch. And it has been snuggled down and circling a little racetrack within Virgo for several months now and will until December of this very year, 2012. But we have something very unique working forward at this time. Mars, the old war planet, is right now in the uh, constellation of Leo, the lion. But he's rapidly moving toward Virgo and will enter into that uh, constellation on January the 15th. And this is what's ironic. He will charge on into Virgo until the 24th and then he stops and retreats backwards. That's the war planet. And, of course, Virgo being the virgin, and that is where Christ symbolically is, and the stars, if you go by that star calendar and the star work. That and five bucks will get you a cup of coffee about anywhere. But if I were you, you are a watchman, and as Genesis 1 tells us, God gave us these as signs and seasons and we are to watch. So if I were you, I would be very aware between the 15th and the 24th and a few days after of this month, January, because the war planet is moving right up next to Christ's own star. Does that mean there's war in heaven, or does it mean we have war on earth, or it's close to it? I don't know. We're given signs and seasons. It's up to you to determine that, why you're a watchman. Now, um, how, how precious it is. There's something else that's very unique that will transpire this year. Many people might tell you there is a planet alignment on December the 21st. There isn't. Okay. The planets are not aligned on the winter solstice. However, what about the December solstice? It is the moment when the Earth's north pole is tilted most away from the sun giving midwinter for our northern hemisphere, midsummer for our southern, the sun appears to travel along the ecliptic, a great circle that has to cross every other great circle at two points. And one of those great circles is the, the galactic equator, or midline of the Milky Way. In 2012... The instant of the solstice, December the 21st, the 11th hour, the 12th minute, universal time, the solstice point, like all points on the ecliptic, moves slowly westward by about 170 seconds of a degree per year because of precession. The claim is that 2012, it will have arrived at the exact point where the ecliptic crosses the galactic uh, equator, this will last have happened 25,800 years ago. Now, that's a long period of time. So that certainly is pointing a very special time to the winter solstice in this calendar year, plus many other things through the year. You want to keep your eyes open. We're living in precious times. Will there be war in heaven? Well, we know there's going to be one because Michael's got a a chore to do. But nothing happens instantly. It's step by step. Something's going to happen. Why? Well, it always does. Okay. It may be that you're going to the grocery store and get groceries. That's a happening. Okay. 
But the thing is, as you absorb and you watch, don't go to sleep in this generation. We've got some very exciting things. These things are simply signs that um, uh, when, when an event takes place that hasn't happened in 25,000 years, do you realize how many earth ages that is? Uh, if you were to consider it by this one, we only have three, but it would be several. That's a long, long time. So God wants us to take note. How did the Mayans know that the winter solstice of this year would be special? And that's a good question. Our Father works in mysterious ways, and certainly uh, to question that, one would end up in a heap of hurt. Now, um, four current events from God's Word. I want you to be aware of the four stages of the locust this year. The first stage, of course, being the gnar. The second stage, we find the swarmer. The third stage, we find the devourer. And the fourth stage is the consumer. That means over. Okay. And there are four stages to that. When you see the swarming that's taking place in biblical lands and prophecies that our Father has spoken to us about, you need to pay attention. Open your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 33. Isaiah chapter 33, and I'll begin reading with verse 1. Woe to thee that spoilest and that was not spoiled, and dealest treacherously, and they dwelt not treacherously with thee. When thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled, and when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with thee. Now, you know, Christian nations don't usually attack somebody for no reason at all. We never have. Other nations have us, be that as it may, very treacherously. Verse 2, O Lord, be gracious unto us. We have waited for thee. Be thou their arm every morning. Be our arm every morning. Our salvation also in the time of trouble. And he is our Savior. He is our way. At the noise of the tumult, the people fled. At the lifting up of thyself, the nations were scattered. Our Father did that for our own protection, quite frankly, and also because we deserved it. For, and your spoil shall be gathered like the gathering of the caterpillar. As the running, this, this caterpillar would naturally be locust, and the running to and fro of locusts, that's Areba, Araba in the Hebrew tongue, shall he run upon them. In other words, this is the Assyrian or Syria of today. Only Syria of today does not extend to the borders of Assyria of old. Of old, it went past the Euphrates all the way to the Tigris River. Okay. But we're talking about, uh, do you understand today what's happening there? Pay attention to current events. The locusts are swarming. Many things are happening. The Lord is exalted, for he dwelleth on high. He hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. Jerusalem always shall be. We know the false one's coming there. He's aware of it. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord is his treasure. Loving him. This word fear means revere also. When you love him, he takes care of you. I want you to understand that more than anything else out of this lecture today. He looks out for his own. Okay. And he will tear up the enemy. Behold, their valiant ones um, shall cry without. The ambassadors of peace shall weep bitterly. Right, nothing will work. The highways lie waste, and the wayfaring man ceaseth. The, he hath broken the covenant. He hath despised the cities. He regardeth no man. Cries peace, 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 and promises, and never fulfills it. Lies all the time. The earth mourneth and languisheth. Lebanon is ashamed. 
and hewn down. Sharon is like a wilderness, uh, like a plain. And Bashan, this is a fruitful place, nothing fruitful about it. And Carmel, the very park itself, shake off their fruits. They're, they blast in the field. Now will I rise, saith the Lord, and now will I be exalted. Now will I lift myself up. That's what we wait for. You shall conceive chaff, this speaking to the enemy. You shall bring forth stubble. Your breath as fire shall devour you. When the, when the swarm comes at us, when the devourer comes at us, when the consumer comes at us, it's like shaft to God. You don't have anything to worry about. And the people shall be as the burnings of lime, as thorns cut up shall they be burned in the fire. Hear, ye that are far off what I have done, and ye that are near, acknowledge my might. You want to know your father is there and he's able. Well, I just can't help worrying a little bit. Well, shame on you. Our father is able to take care of his own. If you love him, he's going to protect you. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness hath surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? Our Father is a consuming fire. It's His Holy Spirit. To wickedness it curls. To us it warms our heart. That's who can dwell with it, is those that love our Heavenly Father, those that follow Him and, and stick with Him. He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, he that despiseth the gain of oppressions and shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil. Those that can't be bought and they won't sell themselves. They're going to stay true to Almighty God. That's who can stand the, the consuming fire of Almighty God. Why? It's His Holy Spirit warming us right to the very core. And even when you walk, that light shines that His presence is there. He loves His own. He takes care of His own. He shall, he shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Uh, and uh, bread shall... Uh, he shall be given him. His waters shall be sure. He's going to take care of his own. Well, I just wonder what we'll drink and I wonder what we'll eat. Well, you've got a father. 17. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. Can you see the millennium? Can you see the eternity? That land that's far off, but it's sure to you. Because you inherit it. Why? Because that consuming fire is the warmth of your very body. Thine heart shall meditate terror. Where is the scribe? Where is the receiver? Where is he that counteth the towers? Who's keeping record here? You are. Thou shalt not see a furious people, a people of a deeper speech than thou canst perceive, or a stammering tongue that thou canst not understand. You're not going to be taken over by enemy of another language. In World War II, we did not have to learn Japanese. Okay. That's be the point. Okay. Verse 20. Look upon Zion, the city of of our solemnities, thine eyes shall see Jerusalem. You watch it, it's the barometer. A quiet habitation, a tabernacle, that's where the tent will be, that shall not be taken down, not one of the stakes thereof shall ever be moved, neither shall any of the cords thereof be broken. This is, this is, God is assuring you. Our tabernacle is sure. He even uses you as a battle axe against that that is wrong while you're a witness. 21. But there the glorious Lord will be unto us a place of broad rivers and streams wherein shall go no galley. That's a thing of war with oars. Neither shall gallant ship pass thereby, a man of war. It's not going to be. 22 to complete. For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is... Our lawgiver, the Lord is our king. 
He will save us. So you can rest assured that our Father, even with the locusts coming, and, and they will, especially in that country, that's what it's all about. That's what's going down. As we see Christians being murdered there, we see churches burned, we see Christians being murdered. And certainly with that, we know our Father, He's keeping score. He's got a scribe, and that scribe is keeping record. Turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 51. Verse 14. The Lord of hosts has sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars. That's locust, okay. And they shall lift up a shout against thee. Have you looked around lately? Have you watched the Euphrates? Have you seen what's happening in even Africa today? 15. He hath made the earth by his power. He hath established the world by his wisdom and has stretched out the heaven by his understanding, his knowledge, his wisdom. Do you understand we're talking about your father, he that's going to take care of you? He made all this. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. He, he has all this ability. Do you think he cannot dispel deception when he wants to, especially among the elect? You're supposed to stand for something. You're supposed to stand for him because he loves you. He promises his protection of you. 17. Every man is brutish by his knowledge, not God's, but man's dumbness. Every founder is confounded by his graven image. It's not going to talk, and it's not going to give him any blessings. For his molded image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. A wise person doesn't have a very difficult time deciding who they're going to worship or follow. They are vanity. That means they're empty. The work of errors in thine, in time of their visitation, they shall perish. There, there's not going to be any falseness. The portion of Jacob, that's all twelve tribes, is not like them. For he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. And again, he knows how to take care of his own. And verse 20 to finish this reading. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. You've got to understand, when you're delivered up to witness with the Holy Spirit speaking through you, how powerful that's going to be. You're his battle axe. Do you understand that? We're not playing church in these end times. This is reality, and Christianity is not a religion, but is a reality. And God, uh, you know, see, Christ went to the Father and sit down at his right hand until his enemies are made his footstool. Who do you think is going to put them there? What do you think you are used for? Is when you're delivered up and the Holy Spirit speaks through you then you know of a certainty that Father is with you, that he blesses you. Why? You're his battle axe. He uses you, just as he uses men and women of God and children of God. In these end times, how fantastic it is. He does not leave us wanting. He always lets us know beforehand. Behold, I have foretold you all things. It is written... The thing is, can you decipher it? Where is the scribe? He's left us the word. This is a letter directly from our Father. What he's doing here is assuring you, when you look around you, and you see times getting a little bit tough, you be responsible for yourself. You take care of yourself. 
You don't, you don't have to wimp out somewhere and start crying and begging. You, you make do because you're a child of God. We're going to get it done. We are God's battle axe, and we are not going to let him down. You can count on it. Now, I want to go to Malachi. I'm sorry, I want to go to Nahum. We're going to Nahum for a very special reason. Do you know what Nahum is written to? It's written to the capital of Syria, the Assyrian, Nineveh. And there's a lot going on there today. I wonder if it could be written that we could have a better understanding of what's happening there. I wonder if God would foretell us. I wonder if he would let us know. In the Minor Prophets, uh, and uh, we're going to Nahum, we're going to take chapter 3. And I'm going to begin reading from that minor prophet, Nahum. And Nahum is just past the book of Micah in the minor prophets. Verse 11, chapter 3, verse 11. Again, we're talking about Syria and what's happening there. The Assyrian took the first, the ten northern tribes captive and scattered them all over the world. That's why you're here today. They went over the Caucasus Mountains from the Assyrian Empire, settled Europe and Canada and America, uh, and, and became the Christian nations of the world today. So God has always had kind of a, a, um, a feeling for those that would take them, that nation that would take them captive. The same city, Paul was on his road to Damascus that day. Chapter 3, verse 11, we're talking about Syria. Thou also shalt be drunken, thou shalt be hid, thou also shalt seek strength because of the enemy. That's to say, hidden means you're, you're going to practically disappear. And uh, I'm sorry, I want, I want to back back up to the ninth verse here, okay, if I may. Ninth verse. <clears throat> Ethiopia, that's Africa. And Egypt were her strength. She counted on them and was infinite. Put in Libya. Lubin is Libya, the Libyans. She counted on them. They were thy helpers. Where are they today? Okay. Take count. Egypt, what's happened? Islamic Brotherhood. What about Libya? Islamic Brotherhood. What about Ethiopia? Just this past week, two churches destroyed. Hundreds of Christians put, displaced and many murdered. They counted on them. Syria counted on them. Of what's happening to Syria? Yet was she carried away, she went into captivity. Her young children also were dashed in pieces at the top of all the streets. And they cast lots for her honorable men, and all her great men were bound in chains. Uh, we demand that all the rulers leave power so we can take over the mobs. Thou also shalt be drunken, thou shalt be hid, that means disappear. Thou also shalt seek strength because of the enemy. All thy strongholds shall be like fig trees with the first ripe figs, if they be shaken, they shall even fall into the mouth of the eater. I don't know how many of you have ever been in, under an old fig tree that just has these huge figs and the, ju the honey is just running from the center of them. And if you jar the tree, it's just plump, 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 plump. Those figs drop. In other words, you're going to be, you're going to be an easy prey. You're going to fall like overripe figs. That's how, how strong you are. 13, Behold, thy people in the midst of thee are women, like women, which I, I know some women that are pretty tough. The gates of thy land shall be set wide open unto thine enemies. The fire shall devour thy bars. And those gates are trying to be brought down today. By who? By of the same kind. Draw thee waters for the siege, fortify thy strongholds, go into clay. Tread the mortar, make strong the book brick clown. Fifteen, there shall be there there shall the fire devour thee, 
The sword shall cut thee off. It shall eat thee up like the canker worm. That's the devourer, okay? Make thyself many as the canker worm, as the devourers. Make thyself as many as the locust, Arabians. 16. The, the word in locust in the Hebrew tongue is Araba. Okay. Thou hast m- multiplied thy merchants above the stars of heaven. The canker worm spoileth and flieth away. There's no order. If you were a trained military person and you knew military strategy, you would be amazed at what's happening in this world today. They crown, they're, thy crowned are as the locust, and thy captains as the great grasshoppers, which camp in the hedges in the cold day. But when the sun ariseth, they flee away, and their place is not known where they are. The shepherds slumber, O king of Assyria. Thy nobles shall dwell in the dust, thy mountains and thy men. And no man gathereth them. And and so it is that our Father continues on one more verse. There is no healing of thy bruise. Thy wound is grievous. All that hear the brood of thee shall clap the hands over thee. For upon him hath not thy wickedness passed continually. And so it is when you look in that area. God told us, go to the Euphrates. And the word in the Hebrew is kadim. That means that's east, but it means you've got to go to that geographical location and then look east. And what do you see? You see this turmoil taking place. You see the locusts swarming today. Our Father is there. It's happening exactly as He said it would. Do you have anything to worry about? No, God said, I'm going to take care of you. As a matter of fact, I've got work for you. I'm going to use you as a battle axe. You see, lest you be concerned with all this turmoil of the locusts, thousands and millions, do you know what's going to calm them and bring them into subjection? The king of peace in their mind, who is none other than Antichrist himself, a supernatural entity appearing on this earth, saying, I've come to save you, brethren. They're going to think it's Muhammad. And peace will be, and they're going to come. And that's where you go to work when you witness against that one. So see the overall picture. Don't get caught up in the fuss. And no, our Father is on the throne. He has sent us a letter letting us know exactly how it's going down. What will happen to Syria? You just read it. That's what will happen to Syria. All those that the other kings and leaders uh, that she depended on, Syria depended on, you know, when Iraq fell, Saddam Hussein was furnishing them oil, and she counted on Iraq. Where are they? They're gone. She counted on Libya. Where's Gaddafi? He's gone. It's happening before your very eyes. And now Assad is by himself, basically. But there's still Jordan and some other places that you will hear of. And there will be more in Africa. And the swarm continues as it switches to devour. It's coming. But do you have anything to worry about? Of course not. You know the plan of God. When the peace, 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 instead of peace comes, that's Antichrist, This will all be as yesterday's newspaper. They're going to whore after him like you've never seen witnessed in this world. They're going to think that the Savior has arrived. There's just one problem. Wrong Savior. Okay, now we're going to go to Malachi. Last book in the Old Testament. Malachi chapter 3. What goes around always comes around. 
Malachi chapter 3, verse 11. And I will rebuke the devourer. That is the third stage of the locust, you understand? And this is God speaking. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. What do you have to worry about as long as you take responsibility? Nothing. And all the nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightful land, saith the Lord of hosts. Your words um, have been stout against me, saith the Lord. Yet you say, what have you spoke? we spoken so much against thee? Well, we teach flyaway doctrine and we teach um, Ishtar and chase the eggs and quick like a bunny instead of God's word. And when the false Christ comes, they're going to think it is the Christ because they haven't studied God's word. They don't know that the false one comes first. They even pray after they read Mark 13 that they're the first one taken and a child can read it and know that it's the Antichrist that takes them. That's why. You have said it is vain to serve God. Let's get him out of our vocabulary, they say. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinances and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? Uh, And 15, and now we call the proud happy. The evil, we call them happy. They think they're blessed. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. They think they're wonderful. Getting ahead. 16. Then they that feared the Lord, that loved him, spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. It's in the book, beloved. He pays attention. He knows you. It's in the record. He loves those that listen to him in these troubled times. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. In that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him, then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, and between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. You don't have anything to worry about in these end times. He's let you know exactly. He has foretold you how it's going down. All you have to do is watch it. Be forewarned and learn. And um, God protects his own. This is, this is a lecture of confidence, of love of understanding and knowing God is on the throne. All this is happening because he allows it. He's getting even with some people that took captive some of his jewels. That's what it's about. But mainly he's showing what happens to people that do not study this letter. They're going to be deceived. But he counts on you. To be that battle axe. In conclusion, one more scripture in the New Testament. Let's go to the book of Peter. First Peter chapter 5. Even in the New Testament, the message falls through complete. And let's uh, take it from verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. It's coming. Cast all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Don't ever forget that. Be sober. Be vigilant, be aware, watch. 
because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, worketh, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. That's the third stage of the locust, the devourer. Who is the devourer? I think you read it right there. Satan himself. Whom resisteth steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. In other words, the same attack is there, but you understand it. So what? Okay, God's on the throne. Everything's under control, and you're his battle axe. Grind it, sharpen it, I mean, get it ready. But the God of of all grace, who hath called us, he did what? Volunteered, called us, unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Get ready for it. You can cut it. You can handle it. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And so it is that you have the recipe and you have a year. The year of our Lord, 2012. It's here. It's going to unfold page at a time. Step at a time. Don't get in front of it. Be patient. Watch and observe. Be aware of the 15th and on to the 24th on world events and even heavenly things. Watch. You're a watchman. That's what God wants from you. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for the privilege, Father, of being allowed to serve you. Father, for the letter you have sent us, for the word that sustains us. Thank you for being with us, Father. And may this be the battle axe, Father, as we work together to bring forth the, these days, Father, of your return. We give you thanks in advance, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the mark of the beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of the mark of the beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. To make sure he hears my cry and praises, what is his holy name? His holy name is Yeshua. That's where the word Jesus in English comes from. Yeshua means Yahweh. That's our father's real name. Uh, uh, Yahweh's Savior. I mean, he is the Savior. <clears throat> Why? Because only through Him can you attain that salvation. He's the way. He's the door. He's the water, the living water. If you want to live internally, you're going to partake of it. Yeshua is the name. But always pray to Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, if you want to use the sacred names. And always ask in the name of Yeshua Messiah, Jesus. Because that gives credentials that you're a Christian to the Father. But always pray to the Father. Okay, we're going with John from Florida. I was told that if, if you put a drop of olive oil on your forehead and command evil spirits to leave your body, that the evil spirits would leave. Well, you're a little bit short there. You put a little drop of oil on your finger and place it on your forehead, and you order them out in the name of Jesus Christ. You leave Jesus Christ out of it, and they will rend you. They're not going anywhere, because you don't have the power to do it. But in Christ's name, 
<clears throat> then, and then only, can you run them out. Okay, Rodney from Alabama. Please explain 1 Peter 3.20. Does that mean the other souls that rode Noah's ark uh, weren't, weren't saved? No, it, it, only, it means one thing what it says. It means there were eight Adamic people. That means eth ha -adam. They were the only, as you'll read in Genesis chapter 6, the only pure pedigree that was left that hadn't intermixed with the fallen angels where you had Geber and Mamzars. Okay. And um, that's why the flood came, was to destroy uh, the Geber or the giants, which were not born from above, but left their first place of habitation and came here and seduced women. So the, the, those eight were eight eth Adam through which Christ must come. The others were two of every flesh of um, people that would accept Messiah when he came, possibly. But uh, it doesn't mean they weren't saved. I guess you would have to say they were saved from drowning. Mary from Missouri. When Jesus said, do not have any false gods before you, what are the false gods? What are the names of the false gods? Well, it's Satan. It's Antichrist. That's the main one. Many people can make a God. Anytime you place something between yourself and God, I'll say I'll word that a little differently. Anytime you ignore God and let something else come before you, and you, it might be your business. Don't worship it. Don't let it deny God. Always have that certain time of the day or set aside a specific time. Some people have different appetites. Some people need to study much, and some people don't need to study very long. They have different appetites. Never try to force your appetite off on somebody else. But the main name of the false characters are Satan, Lucifer, which is all one and the same, the false Christ, one and the same. Jessica from Washington, would I be able to help my... Hi, I am Jessica. I live in... Washington, I am 17 years old, and I have watched your program for about three years. I love your teaching, and I thank God for your program. May God can bless you, your family, and God's church always. Well, he sure does. Thank you, darling, for saying that. I am adopted, and my adopted father got remarried, and my question is, would I be able to help my stepmom and her two boys? They don't believe and mock me and my sister when we talk about God. Well, honey, you hang tough and you be gentle and be respectful to your stepmom. But at the same time, you are mature and unfortunately probably she isn't in God. Okay. Um, so the one that is mature and loves the Lord must have be the one that has the patience, else, except for the grace of God, there go I. But you're 17, you're soon going to be a grown woman. You're going to be on your own. So you can, you can handle anything until you reach that point and always take care of your little sister, okay? But you're, you're going to do just fine. You hang tough. And in another year, you'll be able to make your own decisions. But, but at the same time, as a Christian, try to bring her along with you if you can. I love you for that. You're, you're very thoughtful, and thank you for studying with the chapel. God loves you. I love you. The whole congregation does. You hang tough. Uh, Mary from Arkansas, would you please send me something saying that just because you have been saved does not mean you will go to have he you will not go to heaven if you do not live according to God's word. My husband thinks that once you're saved, you're you will go to heaven, no matter what. Well, I'm sorry, but he's in error. Many people are going to worship the Antichrist. That's that's no longer a virgin waiting for the bride when Christ returns. You are responsible in the book of life for any sin you have committed that you have not repented for. And on Judgment Day, you will pay. And certainly, Christ does the saving, and it's always there as long as you will repent. But if you don't repent, 
uh, don't call Christ a failure. It's we that are failures for not repenting and doing what is right. Tom from Maine. Does the Bible say anything about when you die and go into our spiritual bodies? Are we like newborns or will we remember our lives here on earth? We will be grown adults as God created us. And um, in the spirit body, there's no such thing as age. Some will have mortal bodies, uh, souls rather, and some will have immortal souls. It's which side of the gulf you're on in paradise. Charlotte from Florida. Why wasn't Abel mentioned in Adam's genealogy? Thank you. I've watched you for years. Abel had no progeny. Uh, Cain slew him. So if he has no progeny, there's no progeny to put down from for Abel. It was over. His m brother murdered him. Daniel from Minnesota. I was wondering where in the Bible does it talk about seeking the knowledge of God and that is the main thing of man's duties? Well, one of the places that I like best is Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. Proverbs 1, 7. Eleazar from Texas. There is a group of people who say they are only the only church mentioned in the Bible, so they will be the only ones who go to heaven. And no matter how hard you try to get into heaven, you can't. Is this true? Absolutely not. Uh, there is no one church, uh, you know, that uh, that uh, on earth today that is the only one that will go to heaven. John 3.16 holds true for every soul, regardless of where they are or what, on an individual basis. It reads, God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe upon Him, not whatever church they would belong to, believe upon Him, should not perish. That's heaven bound. Uh, Asinto from Idaho what is the mark of the beast? Is it a mark on your head or your hand? No, it's in your brain. It means you don't know any better than to worship the false Christ. And the rapture doctrine is kind of the lead into it. You've kind of already received his mark if you believe that when it's not even in God's word. You, you've kind of been had. But it's never too late to change and learn truth. Gene from California is it a sin for a woman to wear jewelry and makeup? Everything in moderation. <clears throat> the only reason that women were told not to paint themselves is that was in a time of old the way a prostitute identified herself was by shades of purple, meaning she was available. And uh, that's what they didn't want you to participate in. But... Makeup in moderation is, um, some people have uh, too much sun, sunscreen, and things that, uh, for health reasons, everything in moderation is fine. Victor from Oregon, where can I find in the Bible the scripture that say, to be absent from this body is present with the Lord? Second Corinthians chapter 5, 7 and 8. Yeti from Arizona. <clears throat> I work in physical therapy, and I had an experience to go work with a Down syndrome patient. And when I walked into the room, I never knew this person. And he said, I know you. You know God. And I said, yes, I do know God. Does God have special people out there? No, anytime that you, are uh, you have the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> an innocent person can sense it. People are drawn to it, okay? That's just, that's the evidence of having the Holy Spirit in your person. Bob from California, Pastor, how can I prove the Kenites are descendants of Cain? Simplify from an old tail gunner in the Air Force and simplify right back. Uh, it's real simple. You see, the word Kenite means offspring of Cain. It's a Hebrew word. Take your strong concordance and... Um, Check out the word Kenite, and it will tell you the offspring of Cain, the firstborn. <clears throat> Sharon from Kentucky. May your teaching continue to be blessed. Well, thank you, and we ask the same. Will there be women as we know them in our next life, or will we all be male? We're not going to be male. We're not going to be female. We're going to be as the angels. Okay, That's the teachings of Christ. 
They neither are neither given marriage nor taken marriage, but are as the angels. <clears throat> That's in the third heaven age. Uh, my, don't let that throw somebody, for the bodies were in, in heaven in the second earth age and the first. My name is Christy from Florida. I love you and I thank you. I appreciate that. That's returned. I have a question I need you to answer. My sister has confided in me that she has committed adultery several times and I told her to repent and renew her mind. However, she believes the sin is unforgivable. <clears throat> Excuse me. Adultery is not the unpardonable sin. You assure her not to harm herself. But... Christ paid an awesome price on the cross that that sin could be forgiven. You know, it's, it's, it, is it a bad sin? Well, it's not good, but it's forgivable. And God loves her. She needs to do that repenting right away. And, and, and um, once she repents, he said, I don't want to hear about it again. Then stop bringing it up. Forget about it. It's past. It didn't happen. Um, this would be Jerry from Kentucky. What does pray that your flight be not in the winter mean? Well, you're quoting, like, say, from Mark chapter 13 or Matthew 24, and what it means is, it's talking about the harvest. You don't harvest in the middle of winter. What it means is you would be taken out of season by the Antichrist, Okay. Ron from West Virginia, why is it in your spiritual body to, it takes 1,000 years to teach and in the flesh body you get less than one-tenth time? <clears throat> it isn't a matter of take that long to teach. But Satan is locked away for that long period of time because this is the final chapter. People will have that opportunity. They're in spiritual bodies. They will not see death as far as we know death today. And they will have an opportunity to learn the truth. And when Satan is released a short season, this is for people that didn't overcome in the earth. If they still go with him, they're going to hell. That's just the way it is. We don't want them around. We don't want to have to go through this again. We want peace there. Uh, from Scott from Pennsylvania. Thank you for your comment. I understand Satan cannot produce life. What, with that said, how was Cain the seed of Satan? Well, uh, God created Satan and God created the woman. Satan didn't. <clears throat> that that is natural is natural. Bob from Nebraska, I have a question. I, I know when you die, your spirit body goes back to God. When Jesus returns to earth and all the spirit bodies, are they going to be with him? Not all. Those that God uses to teach through the millennium and then heaven is shut for that period. Now, I've had people tell me that they are a born-again Christian. Just exactly what does born-again mean? It's a misquote from the manuscripts. It's supposed to be born from above. And anybody that is in a flesh body born of man and woman naturally is born from above. Trish from Washington, as far as the health laws go, I know you are not supposed to eat pork, so what is the reason the pig is on the planet? To take care of garbage. You know, it's to keep disease off the earth. But then you don't eat them after they partake of the disease. Chris from Oklahoma, my sister's trying to tell me that we are Memzars because our father comes from Czechoslovakia and our mother comes from Germany. And I told her that's not... And you're right, you're not. Those are of the ten tribes, both of them. Betty from Georgia. What scriptures in the Bible are concerning the bronze vehicle that circles the earth? Well, in, with Zeke, Ezekiel, it was Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 4, the color amber. Go to your Hebrew dictionary and check out the word in your Strong's for amber in the Hebrew, and you'll see it's highly polished bronze. Gordon from Illinois. When Satan is back, doesn't he kill the two witnesses? Doesn't that tell people right then that he is Satan? Do you think people are going to believe uh, when he kills the witnesses? They're going to celebrate. Well, how do you know that? Well, it's written. 
That's what it says in Revelation chapter 11. Jody from Colorado, is it okay to pray for yourself? Of course it is. And just talk to the Father. That's, that's what prayer is, is just talking to our Heavenly Father. Let Him know what you're... But always let Him know you love Him. How do I know you love Him? Well, you wouldn't be praying to Him if you didn't. And um, you would you would uh, not uh, you would consider it a waste of time. So if you love him, follow him. Vivian from Ohio, please explain the season of the fig tree again. My brain is not holding all the wonderful things that you are teaching. Well, you know nobody can retain everything. The parable of the fig tree is whereby, when as as um, we will learn in Jeremiah 24, it's when Israel becomes a nation again. That happened in 1948, and therefore all that the generation of the fig tree means is to let God's elect know you're in the season of the end, and so it is. Uh, we got Terry from Illinois. Thank you so much for all you. You're welcome. Uh, my question is, where does it say in the Bible how Jesus' body actually changed physically on the cross and became sin? Something about how people can see the change. His body did not become sin. He was not sin. He, desired, he died on the cross where our sins could be forgiven. And, uh, and so it is. And I'm out of time. Hey, I love you all because you enjoy God's teaching it's chapter by chapter, verse by verse. You love it. And you know what? It makes his day. When you make his day, boy, is he going to make yours. Brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we have helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Once you do that, bless God. He will always bless you. Most important, though, you listen to me. Listen good. You stay in his word every day. And his word is a good day, even with trouble. You know why? Because... Yeshua, Jesus, is the living Word. Hearing God's Word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's Word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645, 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program, and God bless you.